Hey everybody, this is Angel's Calamity and welcome back to Dream Daddy Part 15. Um, I had a lot of issues with this one. My capture card did not capture any footage. First, right after our date with Damien, which is where we'll pick up first, we uh, went to a bar for a few drinks. And then I got some footage of somebody else's play through for the bar. But my audio, I went on to the little side quest. We went to an art museum and then we went on a date with Matt. I was able to reload the date before Matt and re-record that. But unfortunately, the art museum, I, it's gone. So following this is some stills, some screenshots of the art museum. So I'm doing my best here. I uh, found out that my flash drive corrupted and all this kind of fun stuff, I had to fight with it. And so I'm sorry for this. Just enjoy. I will do my best to recapture the moment. It was not that exciting. There were some jokes about butts and it was Hugo, Joseph, me, and Damien. It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh. So I decided to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head. It's now lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. Uh, the bar is usually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. I look over the corner and spot none other than Mary, sitting alone and in the corner nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass before staring off into the middle distance. Say hi. I decide to go over, go and say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. This seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway and she finally notices me. Oh. Hey, cowboy. You all right? Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Mm -hmm. Tears start welling up in her eyes. Oh. I. Will you walk a gal home? Yeah, I'll walk you home. I slide out of the booth. It seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out a hand to help her, but she waves me away. Uh. I got it. I got it. She clearly does not got it. You know what? Hang here for a second. I walk over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's cul-de-sac, and I'm just making sure she gets home safe tonight. I know you. Yeah, it's nothing weird, just... She usually has one of the bar staff walk her home, but I trust you. She doesn't, like, go home with... I don't really want to say it. One of the guys she meets? Nah. Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up the street toward the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her, for fear that she might hit on me. Or not. What did the bartender mean by ain't her thing? So why uh, you have to see me like this? I'm usually not. I know Joseph doesn't like it when I just... Sorry. It's alright. I'm sorry hey. if I'm ever mean to you. It's alright. <sighs> no, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just... I'm having a really... Forget it. As we get to the cul-de-sac, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait, can we just... Hold on. What's wrong? Hey. How about another hey. day? Old time's sake? Come on, Mary. It's bedtime. Good boy, Loki. Mary looks me up and down, giving me a half smile. Mm. You're right. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding me for a little longer than it feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. Mm. You're a good kid. Thanks for the company. Hey. Mary gives me a pat on the back, straightens out her sweater, and walks the rest of the way to the front door herself. Huh. Wasn't that nice? Now we go ahead and start the little side quest with the group text and where the image stills come in. <laughs> then after this... We get to the actual recording. First, they made a group chat, and Hugo says, Hey, are you up to anything tonight? 
And Damien says, Oh, Hugo and I were planning to the art walk to the downtown, and we were wondering if you'd care to accompany us. I'd normally write a letter longhand, but I've read out of distressed parchment paper. Distressed par parchment paper? What do you have to do to distress a piece of paper? And then... Loki, whoa, I can see Damien and Hugo's chat. Am I a hacker? But I don't see even have a hacker alias. The feds are going to bust down my door. Any minute now. I've got to destroy this computer. Loki, this is a group chat. So Joseph shows up. That's totally Loki, by the way. And Loki's like, Joseph, what are you doing here? I totally did not take somebody else's image and cover them up. I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. He was talking about how he can say certain things that are considered negative slang. They give you points. The points get you to heaven. That's how it works. Okay. If that's how it works, he says he's a minister. I just still don't believe him. He's pretty creepy. And then we go on to them looking at the landscapes that look like butts. Do these all look like butts to you guys? Sometimes the butts are more symbolic. Sometimes the butts are a metaphor. Sometimes the art is about butts they don't draw. Then they went on to see some more pictures, and they were wondering what it meant to the artist, and Joseph says, probably how much he liked butts. You are a servant of the Lord. Joseph and his butt-lovingness were all God's creatures, even butts. He likes butts, man. That's all I gotta say. I don't know, it's weird. But he's not wrong. I mean, God, I guess, if you believe in it, made butts, so... They went on examining more. Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the field of isolation he feels, creating digital, traditional abstract artwork in a field that is rapidly moving towards digi digitization. Then somebody decided to make a snide comment how they could do better, and Hugo got upset. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth, the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one. Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is bad, so your art would be bad. He got mad. He got defensive over his art. Like, I get it. Just don't don't scarf at, scoff at art. Art's hard, man. Damien steps up. Friend, friend, he's not worth it. Damien comes in, cools him down, saves the day. So Joseph calls up, let's go have some wine and cheese. It's an art gala thing. Wine and cheese for everybody. So we have some wine and cheese. Then we go outside, and Damien, Hugo, Joseph, and I walk over to a performance art in the street. Several mass performers in leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. They asked me what I thought of it, and I believe I said fear of existence. It didn't really matter, though. But just butts. I found that funny. And then Damien thinks that there's something special about performance art. With almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their catharsis. With the me performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest form of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. That's where catharsis comes in. That's beautiful, Damien. If I start making really loud fart noises right now, would it would it's art as long as I really mean it? They just did not like his fart joke at all. And he's a minister. He should know better. I was going to start making fart noises, but based on the look on your face, that does, joke is not going to play well with this crowd. Uh, they agreed. And then they went home and they had some... They talked about how the tiny cheese and wine was... Uh, the tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Hey, if you guys were painters, what would you paint? I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes, but I'm not very good. But it's a nice way to pass the time. I want to see Damien's art. I want to see it. I also want to see his personality. I think I would poke it, focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions. For example, luchadors. <laughs> we know where your tastes lie, Hugo. Big, muscular, wrestling men. Look, I don't blame you. I think I'd paint boats. Seascapes. Maybe from the lighthouses? Mostly boats. You'd paint butts. Don't lie to me, Joseph. Then we were asked what we wanted to paint, and I totally said tasteful nudes. Of myself. If I was a painter, or if Loki was, he would totally paint tasteful nudes of himself. And then we head inside to end this little foray, this little adventure. And now we're going to get to my re-recorded of a date with Matt. Decided to go on a date with Matt because when I tried to message Damien for the third time, it warned me pretty much that third dates are pretty serious. Are you sure you don't want to visit some other dads before doing it? So we're going to take all the dads on one date. That's all of them, even Joseph. And before we date our final boo, which Robert is also giving me that message. So it could be any of them. If you guys want to see two dates, let me know. But I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go on one, so I'm not playing with all their hearts. They're all good guys. Except Joseph. He's creepy. Alright, now we're to the you new footage. Dads. I decided trying to piece over the uh, new footage with the old audio wouldn't work very well. So, I'm here. It's uh, daytime. 
kids are awake, the husband's awake. There's gonna be background noise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I figured out what was wrong. It was my uh, flash drive. I had I have a capture card that you put a flash drive into. It's really cheap, but it's worked so far as soon as I figured out how to use it out. But it was a flash drive that's messing up, so I got a new one in there. Now let's date that dad. It's gonna be Matt. I navigate to Matt's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, hey man, great getting to see you at the... I don't like that. Hey man, great getting to see you at the barbecue. We should definitely hang out soon. You free later? A minute or two later, I hear a ding and see Matt's response. Uh, hey dude, I'd be so down for that. I actually am catching a show tonight at the Sound Garden. Want to come out? I still don't know what Matt's voice is. What's the Sound Garden? Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? Oh, I should have read his, me his message first. Um, what's a Sound Garden? It's a concert venue that's also a band that a lot of people listened to back when it was cool to have soul patches. I don't know if that's a voice. I don't even... You know what? Just go with it. I don't know, man. I'm just kind of glad that the part with Hugo, Joseph, and Damien, and Loki, I don't have the recording for that. Because I was all over the place with their voices. So just use your imagination, I guess. Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? While I'm thinking, another message pops up on the screen. Pup is playing tonight. Cool little indie punk rock band out of Canada. Should be a fun one. I don't know you were allowed to string that many words together to describe a band. However, let's get out of our comfort zone. I don't know what he said. I'll pause it in editing. Right here. Post-editing me regretting my life choices. It says, great, meet me at the coffee shop at 8 and we'll walk on over. I log off dad book and think for a second. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtrack decades through memories of denim jean jackets and moral panic over teenagers turning to the occult. Oh god, I had a mullet back then. Oh god, I thought it was cool. Oh god, other people thought it was cool. I finally remember the strange 80s prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envision all of the airbrush vans in the parking lot. Man, how did anyone survive the 80s? What do you... Okay, so I haven't been to a concert in a long time. What do you even do at concerts now? I spend most of the day prancing around, pacing around the house and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool, at least relative to a bunch of other dads my age. I really hope you guys cannot hear Markiplier upstairs. The boys are watching it, and they have it down decently low, but Markiplier's voice, it does echo. Dad, what are you doing? I look over and see Amanda at the door, just getting home from school. Ah. Anyway, what's up? Hmm? Amanda, how do I be cool? Hmm? Let me put on a pot of coffee first. This is going to be a long night. No, seriously. Matt invited me to a concert, and I don't think that I've been to one since you were born. Aww. Yeah, you have. You took me to one when I was 12, remember? I'm suddenly overwhelmed by the memory of a sea of screaming preteens. Oh, oh God, I tried so hard to forget. Huh. The one where I had to camp out with you in line so that you could get a good spot and you cried and screamed the whole time? Hmm. Dad, it was so much more than that and I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed? You seemed pretty ashamed when I found all those drawings you made of those dancing boys kissing in your Trapper Keeper. Trapper Keeper? That's like a, like a, a notebook, right? Like one of those old notebooks? I don't know. Hmm? Yeah, well, you didn't even find the good stuff. Anyway, you should be all set for the concert, if you remember that. Just bring a big glittery sign and cry a lot. You'll fit right in. Well, it's a smaller place, and I think Matt mentioned they were a punk band. Mm. Like, DIY glitter punk? Trash? Straight edge? Come on, Dad, give me something to work with here. Mm. Are they post-punk, proto-punk, C-punk, Jeremy punk? What's Jeremy punk? Yeah. I made that one up to see if I could get away with it. Oh, yeah. well, she didn't. Hmm. They're not positive hardcore, are they? Um, he said that they're Canadian punk? <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendship and politeness as core tenets of the punk scene. Hmm? Well, punk is kind of a big genre that may not be as dangerous as you think it is. <laughs> it became so much more than just counterculture rebellion. Huh. What I'm trying to say is just enjoy the music. Okay, that that's it? Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's not like you're going to jump into the mosh pit or anything. Ah. Well, that's comforting. 
And if a strange dude in a Set Your Goals hoodie offers to buy you merch, don't accept it and definitely don't go on three awful dates with him afterwards. Ignore the thumps, uh, the husband's out fixing the porch. Where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. What? Ah. Never mind. Just have a blast tonight. That sounds oddly specific, Amanda. I show up at the coffee spoon at 8 in what I hope is concert-appropriate attire. I see Matt out front, locking up the door to his shop. Hey. hey, you made it. Ready for tonight? Well, it's been a while. Well, of course I definitely know what I'm talking about. Ready? I was born ready. Let's go with it's been a while. Aw, oh, man, I gotta admit, I haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks were cruel. I have no idea what I'm in for. Hey. Did your daughter make you... Did your daughter make you take her to one of those boy band concerts where everybody would hold signs and scream cries? Hey. Yeah. I got two lined up next month. I still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. Oh. But dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time. This is gonna be awesome. Just hang with me, Loki, and you'll be good. This scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question. Hey. Shoot. What is scene? <laughs> Matt lets out a tiny laugh. Hey. Sorry, sorry, it's just weird because scene can describe a music scene as it pertains to a community of people who like the same genre, but it can also describe a genre of music no one wants to admit they were into. Matt looks off in the middle distance. He says nothing, but I can tell he's thinking, never again. That's confusing. Hey. You'll get it. The important thing tonight is that you enjoy yourself. Come on, let's head to the show. After waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves in a small venue with a straight... A stage at one end and a bar at the other. Most people here are closer to Amanda's age than mine. I suddenly feel very out of place. My want, my waning use is showing. I'm suddenly very aware of my mortality. When were the good years of my life? Will Amanda still love me as we both grow older? Wait, is C-punk actually a genre? I look this up. It is a genre. I don't understand. It actually originated on Tumblr, I guess? Look, I don't know. Maybe I'm too old not saying how my birthday is actually literally tomorrow and I'm gonna I'm not telling you guys how old I am if you know you know if you don't then piss off Matt you made it I don't know who that is <laughs> a younger kid runs up and high fives Matt the kid runs off and Matt turns to me shuddering I get nervous when people surprise high five me me too hey. I'm like a small animal loud noises and large group of people frighten me do you also enjoy curling up a patch of sunlight to take a nap hey. That's my favorite thing to do. Matt Daddy can curl up in my patch of sunlight and take a nap, if you know what I mean. A couple of other people notice that Matt is in the crowd and yell hey as well. Oh. Matt waves and hugs a couple of people. <laughs> he seems really in his element here. Uh -huh. Matt turns his attention back to me. Hmm. I'm so afraid of all these people. Oh. Let's go grab a beer. Matt and I line up at the bar in the back, where a couple of older concert goers hang are hanging out. A couple more people notice Matt and tip their drinks at him. Popular. Seems like you're a popular guy out here. Ah, hey. uh, yeah, I go I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. Hey. But it's times like this when I realize I can only be charming and funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. Mood. Uh -huh. And then I become keenly aware of where my hands are. Mm. And that there's no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. It's true. Okay, right now, right now, all of you watching this, all like two of you, Think about your tongue right now. Think about the way it feels in your mouth. Think about no matter where you move it, it's not comfortable. You're welcome. Now you're going to think about that until you forget about it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I'm sorry, but I do that to myself a lot. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. God damn it, where do I put my tongue? Hey. See? Well, I've known you for more than five minutes, and I still think you're charming and funny. Just you wait. Hey. We grab our drinks. This scene seems really friendly. I don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it. <laughs> ha! Let's check out the merch. Hey, uh... Matt and I walk over... Oh. You're a character, aren't you? You are just... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're... Spiffy. Matt and I walk up to a small booth in the corner of the room where a crusty-looking teenager guards a collection of shirts and records. He singles me out from across the room and hops up on his chair. 
Step on up. Get your merch here. I got t-shirts. I got tank tops. I got all gifts and accoutrements for discerning concert goer of considerable taste might want. You. I don't know what I'm, I'm doing for his voice. Just, just go with it, guys. I gesture to myself, face flushing red. Yes, you. You look like a fella who knows their music. Howls about a five, twelve-inch long playing vinyl record made and distributed by Pup Canada's premier punk rock. Out, punk rock. I know words. Canada's premier punk rock, out, rock outfit. Uh, tally ho, good sir, or please stop yelling at me. Uh, tally ho, good sir. I'm gonna say please stop yelling at me. I'm already kind of on edge because this is an unfamiliar place and I don't know anybody here and I'd appreciate it if you'd stop singling me out and I'm sure you're cool but it's making me a little uncomfortable. The kid immediately hops off the chair. You got it. Sorry about that. I just get really excited about salesmanship. I can't relate but I appreciate your enthusiasm nonetheless. Matt liked that I guess. Hey Pablo. Your friend looked lost so I figured I'd give him the old razzle dazzle. How the hell are you Matt? Hey. <laughs> day by day, my man. They do that thing where they high-five, but also turn it into a hug. Oh. Your mom doing any better? She's still single. If you want to be my dad, I could make that connect. <laughs> and have to deal with your you every single day. Look, I know he's got the wrong accent for the name Pablo. But you know what? It don't matter. You can have any name and have any accent. You can have any skin color and be any accent. Don't, don't look at me. Don't judge me. Don't at me. It doesn't matter enjoy it. Fair enough. Who's your bud? Hey. That's Loki. I thought I'd bring him out for a concert, pal. Pablo leans close to Matt. Like, real close. How close? Like this? He looks like he's gonna punch him. Is Loki cool? Hmm. Matt eyes me. I eye him back. Hmm. He cracks a smile. Oh. Yeah. Pablo brings me in for a bro hug. My dude! I'm not sure what to say, but give the courtesy two pats on the back, as is customary in our society for people you don't know super well, but still want to be friendly to. Is it? Is that a custom? I feel like it could be. I feel like it could be. Oh. Pablo's a total card. Kid plays the hell out of a bass. Yeah, man, we were starting a witch house band. Yeah, sounds great. You know, I'm out of the game. It's a shame, you know, Vanket Vale would have slayed. <laughs> oh, it'll slay once you actually start making music instead of just printing a bunch of band shirts. We got the sickest logo. While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out the merch. These shirts are really nice. Hey. Looks like the own opener's coming on. Let's get a spot up close. Hey. Matt and I walk over the stage where a crowd begins to form. The band walks on stage and pick up a variety of strange instruments. Is that a hopsichord? The lead singer addresses the crowd. He has a mandolin slug over his back. Oh, God. Hey. I what's up, everybody? Well, Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Look, I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm allowed to be weird with the with the extras, right? My name's Daniel. Let's start the show. Hmm. Oh no, these guys. What? Without time to respond, the band starts playing the most cacophonous noise I've ever heard. Hmm, that's a noise. What is this? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks! I put on the earplugs in, and whatever the hell is assaulting my ears gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure to be seem to be having fun. I guess that's what really matters. Hey. Okay. Jesus, did that Celis just break his bow in half? I don't get this. The set seems to go on forever. There's no breaks in the songs, and I think one of the band members' jobs is specifically to burn poetry on stage. I turn to Matt and try to start a conversation. So do you go to a, so you go to a lot of count concerts out here, huh? Mm. What? Ask again or drop it. I want to drop it because he's not going to be able to hear us anyway. He can't hear me, so I just stop and try to enjoy the music. Just how can you enjoy that, though, if it's that bad? Okay, no, this is impossible. How long have they been playing the same song? Ten minutes? Twenty? A year? Eventually, eventually, the set ends, but only after the drummer sprains his ankle during his saxophone solo. They promised it was part of the act as he was carried off stage crying. Look, my ankle still is messed up. Okay, do you not know what happened? Oh, <laughs> I don't know how to walk. Moving on. Hmm. Matt and I both pulled our earplugs out. Hey. Man, that was something. I promised Puppet much better. I just have a lot of questions that I know we'll never get the answer to. Oh. Oh yeah, he sprains his ankle at every show. They were being real about that. Okay. Uh -oh. 
Let's grab another beer. Matt and I walk our way out of the crowd and work to the bar. More and more people file into the concert space as it gets closer to the main act. It's getting kind of crowded in here. We grab our beers and I try to follow Matt back to our spot, but there are no, so many people that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the throngs of excited concert goers, I've realized I've lost Matt entirely. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a sea of hip 20-somethings. I'm lost. How am I ever going to find Matt here? Where's the exit? Are there even exits? What if I'm trapped in this building forever? Am I going to see my daughter ever again? What if that terrible band gets back on stage? What if... Anxiety, Dad. Suddenly, a hand reaches out to grab me. It's Matt. They should have kept it black, and then as soon as... Yeah, oh, well. Hey. Almost lost you, buddy. Phew. I got really nervous for a second there. Hey, yeah. You and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me back towards the stage. I can feel myself blushing a little. Ooh, ooh. We finally settle back into our spot and wait for the band to start. Busy place, huh? Hey. Yeah, Puppet really brings out a crowd. So you go to concert a lo concerts a lot? Hey. Oh yeah, it's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're in a room full of people connecting with the music just the same way that you are, that's magic. I suddenly have the urge to pee. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I've never heard it put that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. Hey. Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. I squeezed my way out of the crowd towards the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had an eyeliner th wig thing going halfway across her face, which was actually a pretty good look. I'm so proud of her. I make it to the restroom finally, but it's one of those single-person restrooms with a line forming outside of it. Oh, jeez. As soon as I finish my business, the band starts. Crap. The people that were initially mulling around the venue all show up. All crowd up against the stage as Pup plays her first song. How am I ever going to find Matt now? Oh, what's going on? Okay, I know. You guys know. I know because I've done this before, but I'm trying to keep it mysterious. So you guys know what I know, and that way we can know together, you know? Everyone's rushing to the main stage to watch Pup play. Aw, jeez, Rick. I'm sure Matt will be up there, too. Gotta get there without being trampled by all these rowdy youths. Avoid those youths. Okay. I got this got this. Um, let me, let me through. Ow, be nice. Children, children. I'll be patient. I'll be patient. Just eek in here. Just avoiding the rowdy. No, no, no. Ow, you jerkbag. Ow, ow, ow. Leave me alone, leave me alone. Leave me Don't touch me. Leave me no, no, no. No, no. Don't touch me. No, quit trying to mosh in my no-no parts. I want that heart, you bastard. Wait, I got it, I got it. Yes, got it, got it, got it, got it. Come on. I just have to survive, I think. Just, just another 13 seconds. Ow, no, don't touch. Leave me alone. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! No, 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 Ow! Ow! You survived the crowd. There we go. Ah, I don't know if I'll do as good as I did before. S plus pop punk. That's what I got last time. Score. And I was surprised then as I am now. Honestly. I'm finally able to work my way through the crowd to where Matt originally was, but he's nowhere to be found. Shoot, I guess I should keep look. I'm bumped into from behind, and I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in a circle to the music. I'm in the pit. How do I get out of the pit? The mosh pit. Out of nowhere, a youth shoulders himself into me and keeps moving in a circle. Mosh pits are awesome. Hey! I guess I'm moving in the circle now. I frantically search for a way out, but all I can see is an ocean of youths rhythmic rhythmically slamming into one each other. Into each other. Words! Another youth slam in, slams into me and I lose my balance. I'm about to topple over. This is it. This is how I die. Trampled under the boots of counterculture. Someone grabs my hand. Someone familiar. I look up and see Matt. He pulls me back up to my feet. You're wild, dude. Oh, I got eggplants and, and squirts, I guess. He really enjoyed that. Me falling. That's great. Matt throws his arm around me and we jump back in the circle, bashing the youth left and, left and right as Pup plays a killer solo. That's adorable. <laughs> I didn't know you messed with the pit. Hey. Me neither. I can't believe this. I'm having fun. I'm a little mad that I didn't stretch before physical activity, but I'm having fun. The song ends and the pit finally dissipates. Everyone cheers on Pup. Maybe I only got enough pit energy for one song. <laughs> All right, man, let's retreat. We'll show these kids how it's done another day. Oh. We work our way to back to a more comfortable spot in the crowd and enjoy the rest of the show from a safe distance. Pup put on an amazing set and basically had to bake themselves af off stage after their encore. With the concert over, the crowd starts making their way to the exit. Oh! Hey, I'll meet you outside. Gotta say bye to a couple of people. 
I hang outside of the venue until Matt finally shows up. Hey, man, thanks for waiting. I got you a present. Oh, a present for me? Ooh, woo! Matt hands me the t-shirt I was looking at earlier. Whoa, thanks, man. Hey. Saw you eyeballing it back at the merch booth. Hey. And I mean, anyone who tears up that hard on the first time back to a concert deserves a reward. Can I, can I get, can I get, uh, uh, you know, some other kind of reward? You know what I mean? A little bit of, yeah, behind, behind yeah, you know what, uh, you, you know what's up. Uh, the youth will finally accept me. Amanda will love this. I'm never taking this off. I am going to take it off. Because, now if I was pursuing Matt, that is what I would say. I like you a lot, Matt. You're definitely, like, tied with Craig. Because Craig is super sweet, but his fitness... So, you're tied for number three with Craig for me in my list so far. But as I said, I think I'm going to give all the dads one date. So we get the full experience, and then I'm going to pick my boy. And I'm not giving it to Amanda, so I'm going to say the youth will finally accept me. Finally, I will be able to infiltrate their ranks and defeat them not only on the field of battle, as we have done today, but as on a grander scale. <laughs> we'll see you in the world pit, youth. Question mark. Hey, Matt! Hey! Hey, it's Pup! Hey, dude, we didn't realize you were here. Hey, dude. I'm so glad I could make it. You guys put on a great show. Thanks. I don't know why they're British. Hey. Well, see you around. Dot, dot, dot. Wait, you know Pup? Hey. Oh, yeah. We met him a couple of times when they first started touring. Good kids. Whoa. Oh! Come on, let's grab some diner food. I suddenly realized just how hungry I am. Man, mosh pits take a lot out of you. They do. I've been to two concerts in my life. Both of them had mosh pits. Both of them were freaking nuts. Matt and I walked to a tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in a corner booth. Hey! So there I am, in the pit, trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering towards me, and there's nowhere to go. Hey. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere, I get this idea. I just lean back and spread my arms. And just like that, I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. Uh -huh. Bought him a beer afterwards, and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He's got beautiful kids. I'm glad you guys worked it out. Hey. Hey, yeah, man. It just goes to show you that punk's not dead. It just drives a minivan and has to hire a babysitter. Mood, mood, mood. So, how'd you get to see all those amazing concerts? Hey. Oh, I used to tour and band. We were small, but it got us to travel all around the states. Whoa. Uh. Yeah, I mean, we were poor and kind of had to scrape a lot together just to survive, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. Hey. But yeah, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this builds an amazing community, especially in a town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I got that feeling. Plenty of friendly people, especially that Pablo kid. Hmm. Oh, man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own, and you could tell it's been tough from both of them. I know he looks up to me, so I try to help him out whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Oh. Thanks. Us single parents just really have to look out for each other. How's Carmen... Carmencia? Carmencita. Carmencia. Car is it Carmencita or Carmencia? How's Carmencia? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh, boy. Hey, yeah. It'll be loud, and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. Hmm. I'm trying to be supportive of Carmen Sia's rebellious face, but I guess it just kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? I think it'd be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Hey. Like what? Uh, fashion, consumerism, or big-budget remakes of foreign films. She's not... I don't think she's quite on the age for big budget remakes of foreign films or consumerism. I'm going to say fashion. Fa everyone can rebel against fashion. Fuck the fashion industry and their standards of beauty. You can always fly in the face of the fashion industry. That's a good anti-establishment op option. Matt gestures to my outfit. I think you've got that one covered, dude. Ha! Ha ha! Thanks! Thanks! Yeah! Asshole. But you do have a very beautiful smile. He's very cute. Ignore the hammer sounds in the background. I'm hurt. I thought I was among friends. <laughs> he and I laugh. We keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely hitting the spot. I love breakfast for dinner. It's the best. Hey. Man. Hey. 
Being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely feeling. I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Hey. Yeah. I just... I don't know. Hmm. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Aw, poor Matt. Matt gets nervous talking to people, but he's so cool. Me too. I've never really considered myself an extrovert and never really considered myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable in every situation always. Me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Oh my gosh, it's me. Hey. Ah, uh, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to. You know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. We finish up our late night dinners and head out. We walk back to the cul-de-sac, back to our respective houses. Hey. Tonight was a blast, man. Loved it, although I'm probably going to feel it in my knees in the morning. <laughs> you and me both. Hmm. I uh, don't usually like going to these things alone. It was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Hmm. All right, I'm calling it quits for the night. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. Matt called me cool. I walk into the house with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head out from her room. Hmm. Hey, Pops, how was the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. Hmm? You don't say. Amanda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. Yeah. Blind leading the blind, huh? Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kind of proud of her, though. Kind of proud. Hey, Amanda, remind me which of one of us just tore it up in the pit at a punk show and which of us just spent four hours probably watching Tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition. <laughs> First of all, how dare you? That show is a classic. Second of all, you moshed in the pit? Who even are you? I am your extremely cool dad. <laughs> all right, I'm hitting the hay, Pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. All right. Tip number, dad tip number 56, who asked your mother, no, don't come ask your mother. Your mother wants none of this. Date complete. Angry about weather, poker buddy, grunge, cool earplugs, coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah, I get it. What'd we get? Oh, An man, A. I just can't wait for your next hit. Ooh. 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 Like, Matt, you're so sweet. I'm gonna press A to continue. Matt, daddy. Welcome. You've got dads. All right, so here we are, where I should be for, for the next one. Hopefully all this recorded well, and hopefully it's only going to take me three days to edit it all together and make it somewhat usable. It's because I think Craig, yeah, Craig is, oh, Craig is only one. We'd go on another date with Craig, but, eh. and then Matt and Brian, we need to do Brian. See, Robert's got two, and Hugo, none. Joseph, none. And Damien's got two. And if you try to message them with two, see, you get this message. Hey, you know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. You might have not had time to browse book, dad book for a while. Are you ready? We're gonna, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for all that. But anyway, and I, yeah, I see the little thing over there in the corner that we have like a side quest thing to do, side mission. But I'm gonna end this one right here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with me and all my derpiness and my troubles, and thanks for watching my shitty videos, and, uh, this is Angel's Calamity, Dream Daddy Part 15. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye